All right, so now we're going to 65C, and now we're going to transform these trigonometric functions, much like you did in your uh, intermediate algebra classes and probably earlier in this one shifting things right and left and making the periods greater making it open wider um, have a vertical stretch or horizontal stretch whatever it was and so they're reminding us about our core functions so nothing new here we have sine cosine uh, cosecant and secant represented there he's just showing us those sorry about that and then um, there's tangent and cotangent as well. And so what he's reminding us of is that if you have the function x minus d, it's going to move to the right. And so we know all about these movements, but um, he's making sure that we're remembering those. So let's go down and see these examples and see what we're dealing with. So let's look at example one. Example one says, and I'll just make it really big here sine of x minus pi. So here's what we should know. And not know because it's here in this section, but know because we did it in the past. There's no difference than graphing that and graphing what you did in an intermediate algebra class. Um, if we had f of x cubed, you, you hopefully you remember that that looks like this function. If we had f of x is equal to x minus 3 cubed, well, we knew that that moved three units to the right and looked exactly the same. No difference whatsoever. We have this function right here. And so as we go to, to look at this function, um, let me erase all of this. We have this sine of x. So everything really is contingent upon your algebra skills. That is going to be at the utmost test in your calculus class. So sine of x minus pi. Well, let's go ahead and look at what sine of x looks like. Well, we know what sine of x looks like. It looks like this. So y equals sine x. Very nice. Starts at 0, peaks, drops, and comes back. There's one period of it. So we need to find the graph of x minus pi. Well, we know what happens there. It's going to move pi units to the right. So let me remind you, this is 0. This is pi. This the middle was pi over 2. So we're going to take this thing and move it forward. So where does it end up? Let's do our new graph in blue. Where we did start at 0, I'm going to take this initial blue point here. And we're going to start at pi later. And we're going to do the exact same thing. Go up, come back down, and go up. Let me get this to go down for us and so if I extend that line out remember this is this is now 3 pi right in the middle is 2 pi this is now 3 pi over 2 and this is pi over 2 beyond 4 pi over 2 this is 5 pi over 2 that's all we have to do now it depends on how what how much of a period he wants us to draw so let's see example one graph that so doesn't say how many, but let's see what he does. Um, he's saying add pi to each root, and that's exactly what we did. We took 0 plus pi and the 2 pi plus pi, and we came up in pi plus pi, and then we move it to the right. And then that's what we end up with, min and max of 1. So you can see that that's exactly what we came up with there as we go through. Example 2, we have to move this sine x graph so everything goes off of the parent graph. We got to move it forward to the right, pi over 2, because of the minus pi over 2. You already know that that moves it to the right. That you pretty much do the opposite of what's in the parentheses there. And so what are we going to do? Well here, right here is our basic sine graph, but now everything gets moved pi over 2 forward. So we're going to take this graph and we're going to peak early, drop, and go. So why is he saying add pi over 2 to everything, to each root? Because that's what we do. So even though these look the same, these two right here, they're different because this is pi over 2, right? And it was crossing at pi, but I'm going to add pi over 2. So this is 3 pi over 2, and this is now 5 pi over 2 because I'm adding pi over 2 every time. You can see that he's getting those values out as well to get that exact same graph. So that graph right there matches ours up here. And that's what you're going to be practicing with here, using your algebra skills 
and your knowledge of what these graphs look like. So um, in this case, we're going to be looking at the cosine of x minus 2 pi. And so we'll just look at his lecture notes. We're going to um, take our graph and we're going to move each of the roots forward to the right 2 pi. And so remember what the roots were. They were all the pi over 2. So these were the original roots. And we're going to add 2 pi to them. And so as we add 2 pi to them, we're going to get 3 pi over 2, 5 pi over 2, and 7 pi over 2. And if we go look at that graph, it's our regular cosine graph at 3 pi over 2, 5 pi over 2, and 7 pi over 2 having roots. Now remember what the original graph looked like. It looked like this, right? Pretty kind of lame, but that should be right in the middle there. Better. Okay, coming through. Um, I could fix it a little bit maybe. Um, so let me fix it. So if I draw it like this, that's the original cosine graph. So what do we do? We took this root and moved it. Remember, this was at negative pi over 2 and moved it uh, 2 pi forward, right? Because that's what we needed to do is move that guy 2 pi forward. So where is it going to end up? It's going to end up... Um, because it was negative pi, it's going to end up right out here. That's where we're coming to. We're taking this guy and moving it way out here. And remember, 7 pi over 2, so it's shifting all the way down here to this 2 pi area. Um, and then starting there and going up and down at that root. Um, apologize that's not where it's moving it's um, oh no that is where it's moving at that point so that's what we're looking at there it has this type of shape sorry for the hesitation there cotangent we're gonna move it forward pi over 2 um, so he did something wise he took the asymptotes so remember for cotangent our asymptotes are at 0 and pi and pi so those are our asymptotes, and it's 0 right in the middle at pi over 2, and it's decreasing as it goes forward. So that's our original graph, and we're going to move everything forward pi over 2. So now we're going to have asymptotes right at pi over 2 and 3 pi over 2. Notice that it looks very, very similar to um, tangent in that regard, but it's not quite tangent. It's like the flip of tangent. But we don't have to worry about that. Secant x of minus pi over 2. Um, secant of x minus pi over 2. So we're going to move everybody pi over 2 forward. You're going to move all the asymptotes and you're just going to draw your graph. And so it's just all that movement. Cosecant of x minus pi over 2. Maybe you remember that cosecant's related to sine. Sine looks like this. And so what cosecant looked like, cosecant had asymptotes right here at all the pi's, and at the pi over 2's was its min, local min's and max's, using terms that you used earlier. So there's one period of it. we got to move that. Move it forward pi over 2. And so that's why he's taking this asymptote of 0 and moving it forward pi over 2 and this asymptote of pi and moving it forward pi over 2 and this asymptote of 2 pi and moving it forward pi over 2 and so as he does all we have to do is draw the exact same shape just shift it over and he's just labeling that that's pi over 2 3 pi over 2 and 5 pi over 2 that easy once you have those basic graphs there now if you remember if it's plus we move to the left um, and and so if there is a plus pi, we'd move it back. The original is in black, the, the adjusted one's in the red. And so it's going to be the same. So in this case, because it's plus pi, we're moving everything back. So if you remember your original tangent graph, your original tangent graph, apologize, had asymptotes at pi over 2 and negative pi over 2. And was like that. There's one period of it. And we need to move that back pi. So they're going to subtract pi off. 
And if you subtract pi off from the negative pi over 2, you get negative 3 pi over 2 and negative pi over 2. And we're moving that whole thing back um, so that it's right here between negative pi over 2 and 3 pi over 2. And I believe how he's ending is how he wants you to do it in the homework. And that is um, just end showing one period of it. So now we're going to look at what happens if you add something after the fact, but you know already. If you add something after, you're just going to move it up or down. So it's going to take your original sine function. If it's plus 1, it's just going to move everything up one unit. And so if we got the um, cotangent x plus 1, remember cotangent originally looked like this and was falling as we did. And so what's best is to take this inflection point, move it up one unit, and keep everything the same, and you'll come up with that. Same with cosecant. You would say, oh, the original cosecant graph is based off of the sine. Had asymptotes at 0, pi, 2 pi, and was starting at 1, but now we're shifting everything up. So now we're going to start at 2. And we're going to start now. Everything gets shifted up. So we're going to start at 0. So it's pretty awesome to see that happen. Right? If I move, if I, you can just move that sine graph up 1, just like we did. And it would look like this. And we're building those guys right off of that. And that's where they're coming up with that picture. So you'll do some scratch work for sure in all of this. Um, and then minus would drop you down, nothing earth shattering there. And you can see that our graphs, the regular cosine graph being dropped down one. It was going from, it was starting up at negative one. Now, well, at zero it was negative one. Now we're going to drop it down to there. Everything just gets dropped one. And we draw it, same thing with the cotangent, nothing earth shattering there. Um, and then a number on the outside increases the amplitude. It does nothing to adjust the period or to move it, but increases the amplitude. So you can see that where the amplitude was 1, now it's 2, because it's going to double everything and make it a little bit more stretched, for lack of a better way to say that. So if we look at this one together, 3 cosine x, well, you know about cosine x. Let me go in blue here. Cosine x looks like this. right? That's what our cosine x graph looks like. This is minus pi over 2. Let me get a little bit darker in there. This is minus pi over 2. This is 0. This is pi over 2. This is pi. And this is 3 pi over 2. That was our one period. Now, for the original function, that went from 1 to negative 1, right? From a high value of 1 to a low value of negative 1. Well, now these are 3s. I mean, that could literally be how you do it. Technically, it's stretched, and we can come down here and see that it's stretched, but you're the one creating the um, the labeling. So as long as you label it appropriately as 3 and negative 3, we're going to be good coming through. Um, and then if it's a half, obviously, then it gets sandwiched towards the x-axis. And so you can see that it gets in there. So if we look at 1 half cosine x, take a look at what I'm about to do. I'm going to draw my cosine x graph knowing that this is minus pi over 2, this is 0, this is pi over 2, this is pi, and this is 3 pi over 2. Well, where are we at now? We're at a half. These points right here are positive and negative 1 half. Um, so you can see that he <laughs> forgot to change these. This is 1 half, this is negative 1 half. They're the same as they were before. This is 1 third. This is negative one third. I think there's a lot of copying and pasting going on, and that's where the typos come from. But the graph's drawn correctly. But it could be a little bit confusing if no one clarified that for you. Um, and then the question is, you know, what about these graphs that go up forever? You know, how can you really even see it? I can't really see it. Um, it just changes the rate. Unless you saw them side by side, you would really not be able to tell a difference. Um, between them, um, then that's what this is saying. If you graph the original right next to it, that's the only way you're going to be able to tell. 
because um, it's when things are growing to infinity they grow without bound so the transformation f of negative x remember what that does from your earlier study in this class that f of negative x um, flips it about the y-axis that's how we tested for even and odd functions and so um, a negative x is going to flip things around the um, x-axis and so it's going to take this guy um, what's in black is our I'm sorry going to flip it or flips the graph around the y-axis if we put the negative in there um, it should flip right around um, but I think that he's this is not quite done right that's just the sine x graph sine's corresponding so picture this black part right here let me highlight that in yellow that's what needs to be mirrored around the y-axis if you mirror that around the y-axis what you get let me go back and to the blue what you get is that's something like this right that's the f of negative x it's not going to be the same thing because sine is an odd function f of negative x is equal to negative of f of x which would flip that all down so this is not correct this would be the correct drawing of that um, example two secant of negative x you're going to flip it about the y-axis let's remember what secant look like um, secant look like this secant is the flip of sine right so here's sine so this is sine x now I think it's wise to look at sine of negative x so what would sine of negative x look like sine of negative x would take that and flip it and so let me do that in a different color since I have them I'm gonna do it in green I'll circle this in green so as I come down here it's gonna flip it around the y-axis and look like that now remember we weren't asked to do sine we were asked to do cosecant so I'll go in red now to get our real answer we were looking for cosecant of negative x and what's that look like looks like this right here okay um coming right up like that so oh sorry secant doesn't correspond that's all incorrect secant doesn't correspond to sine sorry I'm not going to create a new video I'm just we're just going to laugh together secant corresponds to cosine okay you probably were yelling at me a long time ago so let's take a look at what the original cosine graph looks like looks like this so if we're gonna flip that about the y-axis what's that gonna look like well it's gonna look um, pretty much the same right we're gonna fall and come down here so that's this is cosine of negative x and you know why that looks the same because it's symmetric about the y-axis it is even and so um, and it's gonna come down here right and through here and so that's why we're getting the pi over 2 the my the negative pi over 2 reference angles coming through um, negative 3 pi over 2 and we got these guys built off of that at the at the zero level which is what's happening there sorry about the confusion there um, negative f of x flips it around the the x-axis and so everything gets flipped about that way um, so kind of fun to play around with so here's the cosine again I'll, I'll draw it again I apologize for linking the secant to the wrong one you can see that if you flip that one around the x-axis you do get that tangent x what did that look like tangent x looks like this and if you flip that about the x-axis you get it going up there and down there so you definitely get that if you flip it around the x-axis pretty much the same as if you flipped it around the y as well so um, actually exactly the same because it's an odd function so interesting um, uh, investigations here so try those in the homework and see how it goes